super, super cool. Just wanna do a quick video to show you so you can start using it right away. Okay, you probably saw that Unreal Engine 5.2 came out yesterday, the full release, no longer a preview, so it's officially released. And the biggest thing, especially for ArcViz, I think, is the procedural tools. With the procedural tools, I've just been testing them out, trying them out. I'm gonna show you, demonstrate how to use them. But you'll see that they are essentially like having Forest Pack or some really powerful scatter tool built into Unreal Engine. So I think it's awesome. I think that you've seen some of the animations I've been creating recently where I'm placing a lot of Quixel objects like like ground cover and rocks and stones and all that stuff manually. But this can do it all pretty much automatically. Can you do it over huge areas? I mean, an entire world. And I think that's a pretty big deal. And it works a lot like Forest Pack, in my opinion. If you've used Forest Pack, you'll probably be like, oh, this seems familiar. All you're doing is you're, you're telling it the surface that you want it to scatter on. You're giving it objects to scatter, and then you're telling them how to transform across that surface. And you can, you can change the parameters, and it can, it can update in real time. Super, super cool. So let's just check out a quick demo. Just want to do a quick video to show you so you can start using it right away. Okay, so I'm in the engine here, 5.2. You have to go to plugins and make sure that the procedural stuff is running. Procedural content generation framework. I'm not sure if I need this one or not, but I do need to restart now. Okay, once the engine is restarted and you've got the procedural tools going, we need to add a procedural. Let's see, let's make sure I'm in the right level here. All right, cool. All right, so all I've done in here is put an HDRI backdrop and a landscape. Okay, we can take our mega scan surfaces and put it on here. Just to make it look a little better. Not that much better. Okay, but for the procedural part, let's go to add and we'll go to all classes and look for procedural. We're looking for a volume, PCG volume. There it is. Okay, the PCG volume is telling it the surface so this is obviously the most basic way to do it. We're just telling it the the area in which to scatter. We can scale this to whatever we want. Okay, you can also make this volume unbound if you want, so it covers the whole scene. Let's just let's just put it at 10 and start working with it. Okay, with our PCG component selected, we can go down to the component and under graph, this is where we want to create a new graph. PCG graph, create new asset, PCG graph. Okay, we could just call it new PCG graph. Okay, once we go into the, once we create the graph and go into it, you can see it's basically like a blueprint. We have an input and an output here. And we can just go to our landscape and say surface sampler. So just like forest pack, we sample the surface that way it's basically where this box is intersecting the landscape surface. That's where it's going to start putting points. If we generate right now, we have nothing yet. But if we put an output to it, oh, we got to have the debug on too. So in here, in our graph, under the surface sampler, put the de turn the debugger on. That way when we generate, it will show us each of the points that it's sampling. And these are basically points that objects can be scattered onto. Okay, so we can change those points. We can change the points to be smaller, like 20 by 20 by 20. Okay, and then we can increase the density of them. To 0 0.3, 0 0.51. Okay, and then we can then we can change the looseness of them, right? So if we say 3 then it gets a lot more randomized. If we put it to 0.5, then it becomes more close to a grid. Okay, we can do all sorts of things with these points. Obviously, it's a blueprint, so you can you have all sorts of operators in here that can change them around. The one that I think is gonna be most important for us is transform. Okay, transform. And what we'd want to do is transform points. 
these consider these all points okay and in transform points then we have something that would be very familiar to you if you've used scattering tools in 3ds max or sketchup before okay so we would just put like a the minimum scale is set to one but we could set the maximum scale to four and it's going to be uniform scale there on the rotation max we'd probably put for the z we'd put 360 right and this would be offsetting it okay super familiar stuff to us probably if you've used scattering tools before to see that we need to change our debug option turn it off here on the sampler and put it on the output instead then we can see the full effect of all these nodes so after the transforms happen it can look like that but now obviously we don't want these boxes here we want static meshes here and that's easy to do and then that's the whole trick so we we determine how we want our points to look where we want them to show up what size they want to be all that we can control that in so many different ways here using the graph i'm just showing some of the basic ways transform is going to be a very important one obviously but once you have your points then you just put static meshes into them and you can put as many as you want the static mesh spawner is the actor you want here not the actor but the node you want okay and we just have to go into here and say let's see in here and mesh entries is what we want we can add a couple different meshes go to our content browser i'm going to go to mega scans and add some 3d plants so under index zero this is just an array of static meshes so select one of the bushes you want and add it into this index of the array right there we can do a second one Okay, and then I want to do maybe a rock or something. Add that in there as well. Okay, and you can see you can add as many meshes as you want. See what that looks like right now. <laughs> we have something going on with the scale. Okay. So fix the scale to be more normal. Okay, we've got a little bit too much bushes in there, obviously. So we can, well, we can change the weight of the bushes. We can also, so that less of them show up as in relation to the rocks. But we can also turn this down. You can see we've got some scale issues going on with this big bush versus the small bush. Okay, but just for demonstration purposes, okay, you got to get this all set up how you want it, but you can see the power already that you can scatter things easily over any amount of distance you want. So if you turn this up in size, now we've got all this stuff scattered everywhere, right? Now, one of the cooler things is that you can take, I want to take, let's see, I want to take these meshes and change them. Let's get rid of the small undergrowth one, which would be mesh entries. It's this one, or let's replace it with something else, a bigger bush. Okay, but then I wanna do a different surface sampler for, for kind of the more ground covery stuff, because I want that a lot tighter than the other things. Okay, so the cool thing is you can actually copy this and use the same landscape again and just do different transforms, different meshes, and overlap them on top of each other. So here we'll do a static mesh spawn, and in this one we'll put more of a lower ground cover type thing, and then we'll make it really, really dense. So we'll just take that one. I don't think we actually even need the output here. Okay, so far we're not really seeing that second one. So we need to change the density up, make these small, the boxes, the, the debug boxes that we were looking at before, make them small so they can be nice and tight. Okay, now you see we're getting more of a ground cover here. 
these other ones I should have picked a bigger one for that but we could get tons of ground cover here if we wanted and if we have this set up as nanite then of course we are not going to have a ton of geometry going on here it'll all work fine so all those plants are nanite already the rocks aren't looks like but we could presumably have tons and tons of landscape going on without bogging down our scene and messing up our frame rate we could scatter kind of however we want so the sky's the limit on what we can do and this is only touching the beginning of what kind of nodes we can do in here to modify this stuff let's make this one a little more dense even and we can turn on the debugger to make sure we get it exactly right but this is looking pretty good so we get a nice ground cover so you can see that some of the environments that i've been creating manually could now easily be created randomly and procedurally using these tools so in my opinion, it's a lot like having Forest Pack directly in Unreal Engine. And I think that's awesome because I use Forest Pack all the time to, to fill out my scenes in 3ds Max. So having, having it in real time tools like Unreal Engine like this is awesome. And I think that it can really unleash some creativity and really enhance our scenes quite a bit when we get the right assets and we scatter them appropriately to create natural environments, backgrounds, surroundings for our architectural scenes or for any scenes we want to create in real time. So I hope to do more experimentation with this in the future. Make sure to like and subscribe because we're going to be doing a lot with the new Unreal Engine tools. I'm going to be enhancing some of my existing projects with these kind of procedural tools. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. We'll go hopefully in the future go a lot more in depth to this, but I wanted to get you up to speed quickly and show you what is possible so that you can start creating right away. Hopefully that's helpful. See you in the next video.